Hello and welcome back to another episode of Pop Culture Reacts as we are working our way through Radiohead's The Bends. And we are at track three, high and dry. And this one's this, the this uh, a double, double A side as well. You know, I said uh, when we did Planet um, Telex, it was a double A side. This is the um, um, other uh, track on it. And this was uh, released before the album. So this was kind of the single that led um, out on the album. I think this came out what's about a month before the album comes out um and i guess this was the abridging part between pablo honey in this and what did or didn't draw people's eyes to it um and i i think it's one of the softer um more radio friendly songs on the album and i said this is i think their most radio friendly album but but mm. this track in particular musically certainly um but, but yeah, I, I, I can see why this one got the record company's approval to get this one out there. And probably um, I can see why they wanted it to be a double A side to maybe get some else of some other parts of their sound through. Mm. Um, so shall we get high and dry? We shall. Um, yeah, interested to see what you think about this one. So uh, let's do this.
So did that leave you uh, high and dry or wet and wild? I can't think of any other thing with wet. <laughs> so I, I would say this is wet, but not in a in a positive way. Um, it's just a bit dull and ploddy for me. It's, eh. I mean, I mean, this is the sort of stuff that I've heard of them because I, I do know I've heard this before that never made me then go into the albums to hear the stuff where they things like obviously on Pablo Honey and see what I've already said about with like the bends, the song that when when they're I wouldn't say heavier, but they put a bit more of a riff in or a bit more of a like, guitar harsh guitar tone or something in there that, that it grabs my interest. This is sort of really generic acoustic songwriting that doesn't ever do anything, doesn't really do anything for me. And you know, is it a good version of what it is? Yeah, but as a as a type of song, doesn't grab me, doesn't do anything for me. You say generic. Uh, I'm just interested in picking up on the generic. Um, generic to what? To that sort of guy with a with a guitar that you get. Um, so, in a way, now Sheeran, but those like Frank Turner or things like that, where it's much more about it being based on the acoustic guitar and it just doesn't really go anywhere. You know, you get those, you do get those bits where obviously you get the, the little jangly guitar in there and it picks up a bit, but it just, it just sits there like, eh, for is me. it meant to pick up though? Probably is, not. Is, isn't that the point? But for, yeah. and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to massively defend it. I just, I'm 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 slightly think that you're judging it based off of not the song but what you like in other songs, which I know is is often going to be a, a position that we take. But um, I, I don't know. Is is this a is this a an excellent example of this sort of song? Is it? It is a a good thing for this type of thing but it's just so, this type of thing so, does so nothing good, for me so it's good then yeah well no because i don't like it but you just said it does it's a good for thing me. for this type of thing but that's like saying here is because i don't like fish so here is a a good well presented well made fish dish it, then I'm it's still good, not going to like but, it because I don't but, like but, but, fish. But it's but it's still a good dish, isn't it? You don't like it, but it doesn't make it inherently a bad dish, does it? There's a difference between what you like and quality, isn't there? But as I said, I just don't like it. But this, you, this is the yeah, like, yeah. But but you didn't say you didn't like it, did it? You? you said it was generic and dull. And which I, this that, that's the only bit. Is. That's the only bit I'm trying to to get to on it because I don't mind. Because I'm not gonna not gonna fight to death on this song. <laughs> I actually think it's quite a beautiful song, but it's also one that I I can take or leave now with with, with latter stuff. Um, but but yes, I, I just I just think like in the the critiquing of something, it, it 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 you have to kind of divorce what you like from what is good, and you've said both things there. And and I, I I cease to see how they can be both things. But as I said it's that thing of like for what it is, it's all right. It's just not for me. Well, no, no, you said it was good for what it is. But it's just it said it's just it's not yeah. for me. Yeah. So oh no, as I say, I'm just I'm just saying that from the from the grounds of to qualify your answer is it is a good song, but you don't like it because it's not your type of music. Yeah, yeah. Which is not what you said. To be fair, you come off and went, "It's dull," and and that's is different, dull. isn't it? But that's different. It's dull to you, like that style of music. You say you find it dull, um, and and on the generic thing, I, I, the only thing I dispute on the generic thing is I think 
it almost has become generic because of all of the people who've done it afterwards. And that's not to say that there wasn't people with acoustic guitars before there were, but I think a plethora come after this because of songs like this. And I think, you know, it, it probably wasn't as generic as you think it was at the time it was, if that makes sense. Yeah, I suppose you've got 20, what, 25? No, fuck. Yeah, 29 there. years of... Yeah. Of, of obviously people who have heard this and done their versions of it, but yeah. It's... Well, and, and other things, as I say, like the, the acoustic song was not invented by Radiohead here. Like yeah. it had been being done by people before and things like that. But I think... Um, I, I do think it's less generic than than, than you, you think it is. I think you're using... 29 years later eyes for that for that generic so i don't think there was lots of stuff like this um i mean if there's one major criticism i'm gonna throw at this song and i am gonna throw it at this song is um it, it it's in a lot of music press it, it has um not too long afterwards um been um kind of cited as uh uh, the reason why Coldplay come into existence like has been a massive inspiration for the music and what allowed them to get a foothold and if there's anything this song should be criticised for it's birthing the, the the career of Coldplay um, except for the first album I, I do actually quite like Coldplay's first album but yeah um, it, it feels like a musical atrocity somewhat um, close to some of the worst atrocities ever done by man and um, funnily enough um, Tom York in an interview um, about 10 years afterwards says it's a very bad song um i don't think it's as bad as tom york does but as he wrote it i can't i can't dispute him too much on that um he wrote this uh quite a long time before and i think he even wrote this before um pablo honey i, I think he wrote it for a band he was in before that and over the years it kind of got iterated on and iterated on and um he played it a gig and um uh the 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 guy who was producing their stuff at the time said um uh, yeah put that one in the bin it's a little bit too rod stewart and uh the record company heard it at the live gig and said yeah get that one on your album we really like that one but i do i do think it again i think it's i i think it's lyrically again i think it's very very good i think probably um it's they like to play in in have their foot in a few camps lyrically you know like it's not generally just a singular message and i think maybe this is the one where it, it's a bit more clumsy it kind of jumps from verse to verse to verse to verse. And I think um, partially you start off like a talk about um, like, I'm going to say love, but maybe that love and adoration that you get in a, in a relationship that might not be kind of reciprocated or always there. And then I think it try, then tries to jump into, because I think they add on to it later about um, uh, living in a world where, go back to things from the last song where you've had a hit single and all of a sudden there's all this extra pressure on you and people you want to, want you to be something that maybe you don't want to be. And then I think it kind of flips back again. Um, so, yeah, I, I do think there's some mishmashing in there. But but still, I mean, I think his voice is amazing in it. I think the the, the guitar work is is, is um, beautiful. Um, but, yeah, certainly not one of my favourite songs. So you saying about Coldplay now makes me hate it more. Just like, ugh, ugh. Yeah, but I mean, as I say, you know, you, you need to be able to um, divorce yourself from um, things like that, don't you? It, you know, it, it, it potentially did, and and yes, it leaves a bit of a bitter taste. But you know, it, there's there's lots of good things out there that have led to not so good things when uh, other people get their hands on them. That is very true. Um, as always, YouTube things of liking, subscribing, ringing bells. Comments down there on what you think of High and Dry. Uh, Seddon, what is next? Um, I'm going to say at this point, my favourite song from this album, but I think I, as we go through it, I may change that. But um, next song up is Fake Plastic Trees. Um, and it's a song about fake plastic trees. So until next time, and we have some fake trees made of plastic. Goodbye. <laughs>